Here we'll outline the things we need to think about when exercising with type 1, exercise targets, plus insulin basics and type 1 differences. It goes without saying that staying physically active is good for us. But exercising when you're insulin dependent can sometimes send you on a blood glucose roller coaster that can last hours beyond your session and leave you feeling wiped out and fraught with anxiety. There's a lot more to the e-coach than I've just said. Here's a detailed outline of the information it contains. All of this is targeted at helping people with type 1 diabetes understand what goes on inside the body before, during and after exercise. Here we'll look at some basic physiology concepts, energy expenditure and how they relate to exercising with type 1 diabetes. Learning about how the body stores the energy we get from the food we eat and then how it converts and uses these fuel stores to produce energy for exercise as well as how the body replenishes its fuel sources after exercise will help you better understand and manage your personal diabetes puzzle. Here we'll look at how glucose gets into muscle, insulin on board and exercise timing and strategies for insulin adjustment. In someone without diabetes, the hormones insulin and glucagon that are made in the pancreas balance each other out, so the amount of glucose going from the liver to blood balances that going into tissue. When a person without diabetes starts exercising, insulin levels decrease and glucagon increases to move glucose from the liver into blood to replace the extra blood glucose used to fuel exercise. This can be tricky for people with type 1. People who have type 1 use injected or pumped insulin to perform these tasks. Insulin doses can be difficult to balance exactly with food and physical activity. In fact, this is the holy grail of diabetes management. The better you can get at this balancing act, your responses to exercise will become more predictable, your confidence will increase and exercise will be more fun. Here we'll look at ways to overcome nutritional challenges exercise can create for people with type 1 diabetes. In the world of diabetes, nutrition info can sometimes seem all too hard. So when it comes to meeting carb requirements before and during exercise or sport, I look for the most convenient and effective way possible. Exercise is one of the hardest things to balance, and there is no exact answer to the questions, how much should I reduce insulin by? Or how much carbohydrate should I consume during exercise? Compared to balancing carb intake as it enters the blood with insulin, the inner body interactions that go on related to exercise are far more complex. Here we'll review key points to help you develop effective options for action towards achieving exercise success with type 1 diabetes. The amount of active insulin you have on board is a primary access key to exercise fuels. Knowing the peaks, troughs and action times of your individual insulin regime will help you predict how your blood glucose will respond during exercise. Remember, when you're talking optimal insulin levels for exercise, it's all about timing. Your personal diabetes care team have your best interests at heart. It's only they and you who understand your personal diabetes management plan. Remember, you are the most important member of the team because you're the one who puts it all together to live the life you want. The key goal for successful self-management of diabetes is maintaining normal blood glucose levels. This might sound simple, but for people on insulin, there are many things that happen in everyday life that cause blood glucose levels to fluctuate above and below normal levels. When blood glucose levels go too low, it's called hypoglycemia, or as they are more often called, hypos. Almost every person using insulin experiences hypos. I haven't met anyone who hasn't, and of course that includes me. The first step toward avoiding hypos is to understand how and why they happen. This e-learning module is all about hypoglycemia, what it is, how to prevent it, and how to manage it. As a member of EXT1D, you get to use the Type 1 Diabetes Exercise Dashboard. And when it comes to exercising with diabetes, this is a great tool for making your life easier, regardless of your fitness level or your exercise objectives. Here's how the dashboard makes life easier. First, you enter your weight, then exercise duration. Next, you select your activity from the hundreds available. The back end of the dashboard uses this to calculate the overall energy cost of your workout. 
Then you rate how hard you work while performing your chosen activity. This impacts how much of the total energy used comes from glucose. And that's important if you have type 1. Then you select the time of your exercise relative to peak insulin action. The e-coach teaches you what these mean and how they fit into the picture. In step 6, you can enter your favourite sports drink. The dashboard uses this to provide a drinking guide to meet your carb needs for exercise. You can even enter the carb grams per serve of your favourite exercise food for the dashboard to work with. The diabetes dashboard uses your information to give you direction on how many carb grams you need in four ways. 1. How many grams overall or every 20 minutes of exercise. 2. How much sports drink you need to drink overall or every 20 minutes of activity. 3. How many serves of your favourite exercise food you should eat. And 4. A combination of all. As an added extra, the dashboard includes a workout energy cost calculator and a handy BGL converter. To top things off, the dashboard uses the 500 rule in combination with the total daily insulin dose to calculate your insulin to X carb factor. This is used to show how insulin adjustments can affect your carbohydrate needs during exercise. The dashboard considers bolus dose, whether you use pump or injection therapy, and basal adjustment for pumpers. When you're done, the dashboard produces a summary sheet that you can print and take with you.